This video will review how to solve single variable equations. The goal for solving equations is to find what number makes the equation true. In order to do this, we will isolate the variable. That means for this problem, we're going to try to get x by itself. If we can get x by itself, we then figure out what number is the value of x that makes the equation true. To do this, we see that we have 6x plus 5 minus 4, then our equal sign, x plus 9 plus 3x. We're going to start by combining like terms on each side of the equation. On the left, the 5 and the negative 4 can be combined together. I'm going to mark these to know that those are my like terms. On the right hand side, I see two terms with x's. These are going to be my like terms. To begin, I'm going to combine my like terms. I'll rewrite the 6x, and then 5 minus 4 is 1. So I get 6x plus 1 equals, on the other side, x plus 3x is 4x, and then I have that plus 9 to bring down. Okay. I cannot add the 6x and 1. They're not like terms. One has an x, one does not. For the same reason, I cannot add the 4x plus the 9. I'll now need to move the variables to one side. I see that I have a 6x and a 4x. I can move either one and put x on either the left or the right hand side. It really doesn't matter. As long as the variables on one side, constants go to the other. Now personally, I like moving the smaller of the numbers. So in this case, because 4x is smaller than 6x, I'm going to go ahead and move the 4x. The opposite of a positive 4x would be a minus 4x. So I will subtract 4x from both sides. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do to both to balance it, to maintain the equality. On the left, 6x minus 4x would be 2x, so I get 2x plus 1 equals, and then the 9. Now that I've decided to bring my x's to the left-hand side, that means the constants have to go to the right. This means the plus 1 has to move. The opposite of adding 1 would be to subtract 1, and I'll do that again to both sides. I now have 2x, the 1's cancel out, equals 9 minus 1 is 8. Now this is pretty good, but I want it down to where it's just a 1x. I want the x by itself. I don't want the 2x's. This is 2 times x. The opposite of multiplying by 2 would be to divide by 2. Again, whatever you do to one side, do to both to maintain the equality. The 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it leaves me 1x. I'm going to write just x. On the other side, 8 divided by 2 is 4. In a moment, I'm going to put up three more problems. I'd like for you to try these problems first, and then, when you're ready, play the video and check your answers. Let's go ahead and look at those problems. Here they are. Again, go ahead, try these at home, pause the video, and then when you're ready, resume the video to check your answers. All right, hopefully you've done the problems already. On number one, I have a minus sign in front of the parentheses. Anytime I see parentheses, my first step is to um, remove it usually by distributing. In this case, I'm not distributing the two. It's the minus sign that's in front of the parentheses, and that's like having a negative 1. So what I'll be doing is essentially distributing a negative 1 to both terms in the parentheses. This means the 2 comes down, negative 1 times x is negative 1x, or negative x, and then negative 1 times negative 3 would be positive 3. I still have the equal sign, and I still have that 6 on the right-hand side. I have three terms on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Some of these are like terms. The 2 and the 3 can be combined. They're like terms because neither one of them has an x. This leaves me negative x, and then 2 plus 3 is 5. I still have equal 6. To get the x by itself, I need to go ahead and subtract 5. If I do that from one side, I do it to both to maintain the equality. And this leaves me negative x equals 1. We're almost done. It's not quite isolated yet for the variable because it's negative x. That's like having a negative 1x. To get x truly by itself and get it down to where it's just a 1x, I either need to divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1. Negative x divided by negative 1 would be a positive x, and a positive 1 divided by a negative 1 would be a negative 1. This tells me that x equals negative 1. That is the number that you could plug into the equation, and it would make the equation true. If you were to substitute in negative 1, you would see that 6 equals 6. For problem 2, Again, we see parentheses, so our first step will be to distribute. In this case, it's a 5 in front of the parentheses, so we'll be distributing a 5. We're going to multiply 5 times x, which becomes 5x, and then 5 times negative 4, 
which is negative 20. I still have the minus 2, and on the other side I still have x plus 6. I'll look to make sure that if I have any like terms, I combine those next. On the left-hand side, I see a minus 20 and a minus 2. These are like terms. Before moving anything, I'll combine those terms together. That leaves me 5x minus 22 equals x plus 6. I now need to bring the x's to one side. Looking at the problem, I see a 5x and a 1x. Typically, I move the smaller the x's, although, again, it doesn't really matter as long as x goes to one side and the constants to the other. If I choose to move the x, it would be to subtract x, because that is the opposite of the positive x. 5x minus an x is 4x. I still have the minus 22 equals the x is canceled, and I still have a 6. If I've chosen to bring Sorry, if I've chosen to bring the x's to the left, that means the constants have to move to the right, which means I'll go ahead and add 22 to both sides. This leaves me 4x equals 28. I'm almost done, but I still need to get x by itself. I have four of the x's. I want one-fourth of that. So I'll divide by four. And then 28 divided by four should be seven. My answer is x equals seven. 7 is the only number that if you were to substitute into this equation, you would get a true equation where both sides balance. You would actually see that if you substitute, 13 equals 13. For problem 3, now we have a fractional value in front of x. We're still going to try to get x by itself, which in this case means we're going to go ahead and we're going to move the 3. The way to undo the positive 3 would be to subtract 3 from both sides. This still leaves me the 2 fifths x, 3's cancel, and then 7 minus 3 is 4. To undo that fractional coefficient, you could multiply by the reciprocal. You could multiply both sides by 5 halves. However, I find it easier to do it in two steps. If I see that it is 2 divided by 5 times x, I can think of undoing the division first. To get rid of that bottom number, which again is dividing by 5, I would do the opposite. The opposite of dividing would be to multiply by 5. So if I choose to multiply both sides by 5's, the 5's cancel. 5 divided by 5 is 1. This leaves me 1 times 2x, which is 2x, and on the other side, 4 times 5, which is 20. Now it's an easier equation. 2 times x, well, the opposite of dividing would be, sorry, the opposite of multiplying would be to divide, so I can divide both sides by 2. This leaves me the answer, which is x equals 10. 10 is the only number that if you were to plug it into this equation would make the equation true and both sides would balance. If you were to substitute 10, you would get 2 fifths of 10. Well, 2 times 10 is 20. 20 divided by 5 is 4. And then that 4 plus the 3 would mean that 7 would be the value on the left-hand side. 7 would therefore equal 7, which makes the equation true. 10 is the only number that when you plug it in makes the equation true. All right, well, I hope this helps, and thank you for watching.